Hello, Sasha here. We're going to be looking at a replay from the Arlu vs. Mishi series from the championship tournament semifinals. So this is pretty much the spoilers. I'm only going to be looking at this one replay, but I recommend go watching the series or at least watching the replays before watching this. Because this is basically a spoiler, a minor one, but if you want to see the series, I cast it on my stream. You can also find the link in the championship discord and announcements channel. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, when people think of structure weaknesses, they think of two things. They can't move, so they can go around them. And they can't move, so they can't counterattack you. And the other thing is the eco one, which is if the enemy makes defenses, they can't use those defenses to attack you. Unless it's like a forward seat position. But generally, you can just make eco. Like if they put down a balloon, put down two farms. Uh, and this is Stoof and Tail, so more like three farms, but Balloon's 123, so you can definitely put down two farms safely. On the other hand, if it's like a choke point map, defenses are a lot more efficient than units in combat. In the sense that one MG is like 60 food, three skills are 60 food. But to get three skills, you also need to spend 60 food on a warrant, which structures you don't need to build any warrants. So if you can c cover your uh, base with structures, you can just put down a ton of eco super cheaply since you need less food in combat units or combat stats, I guess. Or not combat stats, but you, just, you, you don't need to build warrants, so it's just less food in combat infrastructure. Combat in general, so. But there's a couple other very interesting interactions between structures and tempo that people don't really talk about. And one of them, a really, really big one, is that structures, well, you basically have no production behind structures. Like, if you spend half your food on structures and you have half the protection of the enemy, well, if you lose that structure position, all of a sudden you have no production left. And the enemy does have protection, and they're probably not going to let you rebuild that structure wall, at least if they can help it. So you just kind of lose the game. So... Basically, the higher the ratio of food spent on structures versus food spent on units, your position becomes harder to break. Because, like, a wall of MGs is not the easiest thing to break unless you have ferrets or something. But generally speaking, since you can just spend so much more food on structures compared to units, since you don't have to build warrants with structures, the position becomes harder to break since there's just more raw combat stats for the amount of food. But at the same time, the more food you spend on structures relative to actual units the position becomes increasingly brittle like the higher the ratio of food spent on structures to food spent on units the more brittle the defense is and if it's too brittle if the structures go down you just lose the game because you don't have any production behind it which we're about to see here now of course there's a lot of other factors here like is being really greedy. Plus also defending of lizards is kind of a mouth. But I mean this replay still shows a good example of it. Especially since under normal circumstances this attack would kind of start to stall out eventually. And I mean the game wouldn't be over. And I didn't really, I couldn't find any better replay since people don't really do structure based decks anymore. So yeah, like here the MGs go down, and all of a sudden, the MGs go down. So Mishi has three warrants of production, Arlu has seven warrants of production. And in a situation like this, and a lot of the time when the person's being ag aggressive, they're not going to let you get those structures back up. So these are forward warrants, which, I mean, even if he got these up, it's still five warrants versus seven warrants They're in the back. And like, that's the other thing. When the... Because Warrens, if you lose Skrills, like right now at the beginning of the fight, your Warrens will make a new Skrill 10 seconds later. And they'll keep on making new Skrills every 10 seconds. When the MGs go down, th that food's just gone. Like, look at this. Arlu is floating zero food. Mishi is floating over 100 food. And he just put down, like, two Warrens. Like, theoretically, if he had started this fight with seven Warrens, I mean... The push would be over pretty much. Arlu would lose food on the little warrants. Like, he'd still be ahead, definitely. 
But it'd still be three farms to three farms on the second mill. But he has no protection. Like, again, he's floating so much food. Like, it's insane. Arlu's not floating any food. So, again, yeah, like, the position is harder to break the more structures you have. But once you break it, enemy has nothing behind it. Since they just don't have any protection behind it. Now, this also kind of... It does matter on the income. If both players are supply blocked, like, if they have eco eco. Like, and they're both supply blocked, it kind of matters less. But at the same time, at least the player with the warrants can sell off warrants to, like, get money anyway. Yeah, but also forward warrants are bad, like. And see here, he tries to get the MGs back up, but it's just not going to happen. Like, if you have too much of your army, if your army relies on structures, when those structures go down, you lose the game in the story. Like, with unit-based armies, you can keep on making units, and ideally, and most of the time, the po a person will overextend and they have to back off eventually, and sales take too much attrition. But with structures, I mean, like, if you lose the structure position, you just lose the game. Generally speaking, if you have too much food in structures, and the structures break. And actually, let's go over this game, too. This is more of an anti- this is a surround game we she played. This is kind of more machine gun denial play, but it also shows how much food you can end up floating with structures. This is like a different macro weakness, one that's much more situational. But it also goes back to not having production if you're spending on structures and how that becomes a huge deal. Like it, it's still the same concept, just in a different manner. In the sense that if you're spending money on structures, you're not spending on production. So if you don't get the structures up, you don't have production left to fight the enemy. Like, you just don't have enough production. It's really bad. So let's go ahead and speed this up a little. Yeah, I want, I want to emphasize the last game. Mishi was just being really greedy, too. Like, if he had, you know, three more MGs, like... Pretty like he would have probably would have held. Yeah, almost well, certainly would have, would have held. But it's still a great example of how, since he spent all his money on a bunch of money on MGs, when the MGs fall, fell, he had no production behind it, regardless of that or circumstances. So I see this happening. I see this forward mill, so I'm like, and I know it's Mishi, so I'm already really expecting MGs here. And I put down a skunk warren, and if you're fighting an MG or forward structure player, I actually kind of like Falcon first tier 2. Cams are also really good, but if it's between Skunk and Falcon, maybe Falcon 2, just so you can burst down the MG, since Skunks don't kill MGs. Anyway, so I started playing really aggressive, since I, I'm... Well, A, he does have a forward mill, but I'm also expecting MGs. Then I see the MG, I'm like, okay. Backing off a little bit to put down some more warrants. And now I, I'm about to push again. I, I wait for the first skunk and then I push again to deny MGs. Kind of gave him a lot of time, but it works out. So yeah, and here's the thing. This is, this is similar. Okay, you know, look at this and ask how this is similar to the structure wall thing. I mean, you can't really see an army, right? but look at the... Okay, he, he just actually spent his food because he bought a new ferret. But he was floating like 70 food. Okay, now he's... Again, so this is the problem. He keeps on trying to put food in MGs. Like, this food is floating food. Like, this MG is 60 food that's not doing anything. I'm spending all my food. Like, sure, I'm not actually killing the MGs here, but they're, they're, their food does not do anything. Look, another 60 food. Like, look at this. He's floating 160 food right now. And he has... No production, and here, like, I just push and end it. Because he's trying to get the MGs up. And it's like last game. Here, like, if the structure wall position breaks, you lose. Because you have no production behind it. And in this case, I didn't actually kill the structures. I just interrupted them, so I had to sell them. But the result is the same. He has no production. He's floating a ton of food. Like... And yeah, look at look at this. It's just it's just not it's just not working. 
Getting 140 food float. 100, 120 food float. And he has no protection to stop me from breaking through now. Uh, I do want to mention, like again, th this replay and the last one, they're mainly to illustrate the concepts of how structures negatively impact tempo and they cause you to float food and whatnot. If the, the point is, there's no protection behind structures and that's really bad if you don't get the structures up because then you just end up losing the game generally. Yeah, I just want to add, add as inside. He could have done much more defensive MGs, and so maybe that would have worked. But what really ends up happening is, is if he has to go way back here, I just take his meal, start farming this up, or maybe I tech. I don't know. But it's not like if he puts the MGs back here, I can just dodge fear. It's all day with my tier two up here. Just play the game. Yeah, I back off a little bit here. I'm just cleaning out the mill, regrouping real quick. Yeah, he lost two skill horns, so it's like, yep. And, yeah, I mean, he surrenders, the game's over. So, yeah, basically, with structures, the more, the higher the ratio of structures and units in your army, the harder it is to break the position since you just have that much raw combat stats. But on the other hand, if the position does break, whether because it's interrupted or it was a comp reason or an engagement reason, a micro reason, positioning reason, or whatever. But if the position falls, like you have much less protection behind it than the opponent does. And that's really bad. Because there's, and unfortunately I couldn't show the other thing since I don't have a replay for it yet. But if you have enough eco, well, you're just going to end up floating food and like by the time you get more units up it's gonna take what 20 seconds just to get another couple skills out like one or two skills i like, guess it's just not quick enough generally then the enemy's just gonna do way too much damage if not outright in the game the other situation is if both players are supply blocks due to eco not matching production well if somehow the structure position did fall well you have a lot less warns to sell off than the opponent does to rebuild and that's also really bad so yeah it's a really interesting look at how structures impact tempo and whatnot in production and basically again structures will make the position harder to break for the enemy but it makes your defense much more brittle at the same time so if it does break it shatters like you're just in a really bad spot now i'm not saying you, you can't put down one mg i'm just saying if you have like if half your army is structures and the structures fall, you're going to be in a really bad spot all of a sudden in a lot of situations. So yeah, that is the end of this video.